is it visible now yes yes kindly yes. make in full yes. uh, okay a uh, very good afternoon to all of you first of all i will at the outset i would like to thank dr mayur agrawal dr ajay shukla a young endocrinologist and dr pankaj gupta for giving me this opportunity and uh, uh, my best wishes are with harbour india a new initiative on your behalf uh, because the academic should grow uh, so this is something which i firmly believe in and uh, we should bring uh, good endocrinologist and definitely they should come forward Uh, in a more aggressive way this is what i believe in so the role of uh, high dose dexamethasone suppression test in today's era is something uh, which is like uh, it's dicey there are people who say ki they sh we should completely refute it but these are from those centers who, which are well equipped they have got uh, three tests like mri they have got uh, facilities for bips that is uh, bilateral inferior petrosal sinus sampling Uh, but uh, in still in india though fortunately in the last 10 years the scenario has changed a lot even at bhopal we have got three tesla mri uh, but when i was in the institute it was really difficult to catheterize both the petrosal uh, vein uh, so that sampling is little bit difficult and uh, so that's why these conventional investigations like uh, high dose dexamethasone suppression test still relevant for those areas where they, we have less facilities so it has actually the for the differential diagnosis of ecth dependent cushing syndrome is definitely is a challenge and uh, in our series from aims also uh, i'll be showing you that data we had a lot of uh, a lot of places we were stuck up so the confirmation of the diagnosis in a case of pituitary macroadenoma is usually clear cut uh, and in cases of microadenoma on or normal findings of mri usually with tumors less than 6 mm some of the studies they say less than 5 mm confirmation of diagnosis is challenging whether we are dealing with an acts source from pituitary or it is from uh, ectopic source that is a question that's a million dollar question which is there so since uh, from the if the audience is primarily uh, endocrinologist this doesn't uh, stand a lot but i suppose there are some physicians who are also uh, in the crowd so for the diagnosis of cushing syndrome dexamethasone suppression test is used in the evaluation of endogenous cushing syndrome and assessing for the lack of suppression of the hpx is by exogenous corticosteroids so it's a potent corticosteroids almost 30 to 40 times more potent than the physiological cortisol so what we do when we suspect hypercortisolemia we subject our patients for four uh, screening tests basically uh, one is the dexamethasone suppression test other one is uh, the overnight dexamethasone suppression test the low dose dexamethasone suppression test and we go for assessment of 24 hours urinary cortisol and some of the better institutes and good institutes they also have facility for salivary cortisol and there are fixed valid cutoffs for it and out of this four screening test if two of them or more of them are positive uh, we usually say it is hypercortisolemia then the question arises from where this cortisol is coming is it because of the influence of acth which is coming from the pituitary or there is some other source of acth or it is an or it is an autonomously a cortisol generating tumor from the adrenal glands that is something that's why we go for acth assessment but dear friends after doing ecth and the ecth is high that is an ecth dependent cushing syndrome but there are two possibilities either this ecth is coming from the pituitary or this ecth has got some ectopic source so it's not from pituitary there's a carcinoid in the lung sitting over the lung or some other tumor nearby which is secreting more of acth so we are in a state of dilemma that's why we go for imaging that is mri MRI usually we go for any of the MRIs above 1.5 Tesla. The dynamic pituitary cell scanning is done, and if it shows a tumor which is uh, around uh, a micro adenoma, so we are very sure that the ACTH is from that tumor, and we straight away go for the rest of the investigations and the interventions as required. But we are in a state of fix when this tumor, when the MRI turns out to be normal. or there is a doubtful lesion we are not very clear there is a speck of a, a lesion where we are in a doubt it may be a microadenoma that is the point of time where we need some extra tests 
So when the facilities were not available, people used to go for high dose the dexamethasone suppression test. And the physiology was that the basic physiology giving dexamethasone at a very high dose, this eight milligram amounts to almost ten times of endogenous uh, cortisol secretion in twenty four hours. And the philosophy was it will lead to suppression of ACTH from the adenoma, the microadenoma, and if the suppression is more than fifty percent. So it will establish the diagnosis. This was the basic uh, uh, logic behind and the basic knowledge behind the high dose dexamethasone suppression test and the other investigations. A high dose uh, it distinguishes pituitary, that is the Cushing's disease, from an ectopic source of ACTH overproduction. And there are uh, two, three ways of doing it: the overnight. Eight milligram test where we at one go we give eight milligram in the night and the morning hours we see for how much cortisol has suppressed from the baseline level and the two day the conventional the two day eight milligram dexamethasone suppression test on the day one a baseline morning cort serum cortisol or twenty four hours urinary free cortisol is taken then oral dexamethasone two milligram every six hours is given for two days that is nine three nine three some follow six twelve six twelve. It's up to your convenience. And total dose of that is 16 milligram between day one and day two, with simultaneous collection of urinary sample for UFC. So the serum cortisol levels are checked uh, six hours after the last dose, that is 9 a.m. And uh, the principle basically is, if the baseline cortisol, there has to be a suppression more than 50 percent. That usually assures us we are dealing with an ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome. It is basically a Cushing's disease, and the source of ACTH is from the pituitary. That is why this hexamethasone, this high dose dexamethasone suppression test is required. So interpretation reduction in urinary free cortisol, a serum cortisol greater than fifty uh, percent in the overnight or two day dex uh, dex high dose dexamethasone Cushing disease, this establishes the Cushing disease. At a cutoff of 50% suppression, sensitivity and specificity uh, is around 60 to 100%. So, increasing the cutoff, what we used to do when I was working with my professor, who was a legend in Cushing's, uh, so she used to say, if it is more than 80%, there is a high likelihood of uh, we dealing with a mild. So this is uh, almost the sensitivity, hundred uh, percent, but the sensitivity is less. Specificity is around hundred percent, and uh, this is what uh, I've been, uh, we have observed in our institute. This is a study of high positive predictive value uh, with the, when they combine it with MRI. Syndrome, who underwent pituitary uh, MRI. IGDST and BIPs. They compared it. So the post-predictive value of pituitary, that is the MRI, IGDST, and bilateral inferior pituitary sinus sampling, that is BIPs, and the combined tests were calculated, and tumor lateralization accuracy was further analyzed. The positive predictive value of combined pituitary MRI and IGDST was 98.6 percent. Very impressive. It was found to be higher than BIPs. 96.8 percent of the patient had a Either negative findings in pituitary MRI or SGDST showing centralizing BIPs results. For tumor lateralization, the accuracy by pituitary MRI was 88.6 percent, where the BIPs was 57.5. So there are trials to say BIPs is better. It is scoring. There are trials where they have combined it with MRI and SGDST, and where they have shown these results. This is something which we also used to face during our institute era. So, Cushing syndrome patient with both positive findings in pituitary MRI and IGDST need no further invasive evaluation. BIPs will improve the diagnostic accuracy when negative findings were found in either pituitary MRI or IGDST. If both of them are positive, then definitely you need not go for BIPs. That is something the conventional wisdom is still prevailing. This is another paper of high dose that sometimes suppression test is inferior to pituitary dynamic enhanced MRI in the differential diagnosis of ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome. Uh, so, 119 patients, a Chinese study, and the pituitary MRI was found to be superior to IGDST in differential diagnosis of ACTH dependent Cushing syndrome. Another paper validating the same thought process. 
if you have a positive finding then definitely mri will score over sddst because if a if a t is sitting over in pituitary and it is well visible and well differentiated there is no point it's most likely it is a cushing's disease which is causing hypercalcemia so there is another paper which is talking about the effectiveness versus efficacy the limited value in clinical practice of high dose dexamethasone suppression testing in differential diagnosis of uh, adrenocorticotropin dependent cushing syndrome so this is again of a paper of 112 consecutive patients with acth dependent cushing syndrome who were then classified based upon the results of inferior petrosal sinus sampling for acth levels 15.2% had that topic ACTS syndrome and the remainder had seat the cushing's disease logic uh, logistic regression models were used to predict the probability of cushing's disease given the results of sddst before and after adjustment for the contribution of series of potential covariates so the logistic regression models indicate that the results of sddst and little uh, add little to the differential diagnosis of acts dependent cushing syndrome especially after taking other clinical information into account so now this is again a little bit uh, more divergent data as compared to the previous one so now they also have this low diagnostic utility of overnight high dose dexamethasone suppression test because i've told you there are three methods of doing it either you give it in one go either you give it through iv that is iv dexamethasone suppression test or the two day dexamethasone suppression which we were talking of so this is in one go you are giving overnight 8 mg dexamethasone suppression test and to conclude they actually had 88 patients acts suppression cushing syndrome and cushing disease and ectopic acts syndrome were diagnosed in 68 and 20 patients respectively and they concluded that overnight high dose dexamethasone suppression test had a poor diagnostic value in differentiating cushing's disease and ectopic acts syndrome so uh So further down, the effects of pituitary dynamic enhanced MRI and high dose dexamethasone suppression test in the diagnosis of Cushing's disease, bypassing bilateral inferior pituitary sinus sampling. This was again a paper which was published in 2020. The objective was to compare the positive predictive value of the combined pituitary dynamic enhanced MRI and SGBST with BIPs in the diagnosis of Cushing's disease to see whether BIPs can be bypassed. so this was again a, a good initiative because the facility of bips is less available in good number of places so the method was a retrospective analysis of 118 patients and uh, so the result was uh, 72 patients had positive findings in both pituitary mri and high high dose dexamethasone suppression test of whom 71 patients were confirmed with cushing's disease and the positive predictive value of combination of pituitary mri and sgdst was 98.6% very impressive which is higher than bips that is somewhere around about 97% so 46 patients who had negative findings in pituitary mri or sgdst 31 patients were cushing's disease among whom 30 patients had centralizing bips results so if you don't have finding definitely bips scores over uh, the rest but if you have a finding then definitely uh you can do well when you can combine uh, rationally you can combine an mri with sgdst and you can go ahead with the further intervention so the positive predictive value of combined pituitary mri and sgdst was uh, greater than bips but acts dependent cushing syndrome patients with both positive findings in pituitary mri and sgdst need no further invasive evaluation but in addition bips will improve the diagnosis accuracy when you have negative findings this is what uh, this is what uh, every paper is telling you the usefulness of combined high dose dexamethasone suppression test and desmopressin because we need to have either crh or desmopressin because this is something which will add value to your investigations so this is a paper it concluded that dual non invasive endocrine tests may substantially reduce the need for bips in the etiology clinical investigations of acts dependent cushing syndrome what they did was 24 hours urine cortisol level and during the sgdst and uh, and plasma acts levels were done after the desmopressin stimulation test in subjects with confirmed cushing's disease and ectopic acts and evaluated the positive predictive value and the two combined tests in the etiological diagnosis so the combination of both tests yielded sensitivity of 
95.5% and positive positive predictive value of 98.4 percussion disease and significantly improved the efficiency of the diagnosis differential diagnosis between cushion disease and ectopic acetia syndrome dear friends i'll be showing you my data on corticotropic releasing hormone uh, and the similar kind of work which i did when i was in all india city so the limited invasive protocol that is optimizing diagnostic modalities in corticotropin mediated cushing syndrome this is another study done by uh, some other institute uh, so evaluated two limited invasive protocol that is lip1 and lip2 in limiting the role of bips while maintaining a diagnostic accuracy they are just trying to say ki without bips we can do and it is almost as comparable let's see what they found so lip so were based on performing sgdst that is greater than 50% cut off in first lip1 and greater than 80% in second lip2 and mri of the cella in all individuals and selective use of ct chest and abdomen before bips so using lip1 and lip2 and cis bips could have been avoided in 62.3% of the patients it was not required because these tests were when they were combined and the sgdst more than 80% the result was very promising so they concluded lips represent an equally accurate less invasive and more cost effective alternative to the conventional invasive strategy for distinguishing between the cushing's disease and ectopic cushing syndrome so high dose dexamethasone suppression test has limited precision and our our paper which has been recent uh, published in 2012 uh, is talking something which is a little bit divergent because now they have not combined it with mri or something other other modalities they have not stimulated uh, acth by uh, some kind of dust process in or crh so 52% underwent the overnight 8 mg test and 64% underwent the two day agdst and with the two day agdst only 41 of the 64 patients had greater than 90% suppression for unary cord sol so there are some disparities when you do it as an individual test this is again a very nice case report which will actually help us in understanding uh, why we are discussing the importance of sgdst and the variations with respect to its combinability and the and its combinability and its comparison with an invasive test like bips the patient was admitted uh, to the university tuck it was in turkey hospital uh, on day 3 after admission the overnight dexamethasone suppression test resulted with cortisol level of 18.5 mcg before the test and 21.9 after the sgdst was almost refuting it is uh, the patient was pre diagnosed was as ectopic acth cushing syndrome because sgdst is not suppressed on fifth day after admission a thorax ct abdomen mri and dota tape pet was performed and the thorax ct showed a nodular lesion they were excited whether they are dealing with some kind of cortisol carcinoid it was suggestive of neuro endocrine neoplasia that is carcinoid tumor on day 11 after admission the lower row of the right lung was resected it was found on that day there was a necrotizing granulomatous lesion more consistent with tuberculosis rather than a bronchial carcinoid again they are left with the same situation was there like the day 3 where the sgdst was negative on 13 day after admission a 1 mg dexamethasone test was again performed as a screening test and it was not suppressible so hypercortisolemia was there acth levels were high that is 65 picogram but they did not knew what is the source of acth on the 17th day after admission ftg pet ct was performed no ectopic acth dependent focus was detected it was non conclusive on day 24th after admission it was done and uh, it was done an intervention to collect samples from inferior pituitary sinus they went for the inferior pituitary sinus sampling a left side acth secreting focus that is acth gradient of 139 picogram per ml in right pituitary sinus and greater than 22000 picogram per ml in the left pituitary sinus after crh so after stimulating and doing inferior pituitary sinus sampling they could later lyse the tumor and the previous hypophysial mri images were reviewed when we look back after these kind of findings most of the times we also do find something yeah this 
this appears to be a microadenoma. This is happening, and I don't think it has changed in the last 10 years. And the presence of suspicious focus was considered, and left hemihypophysectomy was planned. See, on 24th day after admission, the patient underwent a gamma knife therapy. After that, he started treatment with ketoconazole and the rest of the thing. On day 33rd after admission, he was discharged. So, dear friends, to conclude, approximately 50% of microadenomas are visible on P2 tray MRI. P2 tray image was relatively unhelpful with a low predictive value of uh, position of the adenoma is identified at surgery. Therefore, P2 tray image using MRI should be interpreted together with bilateral inferior petrosal cell sampling for ACTH. In children, BIPs contributes to the localization of microadenoma by demonstrating lateral or midline ACTS secretion. So this is how the story goes. So ACTS sampling gives a better prediction for the site of the microadenoma than pituitary imaging. So this is talking about BIPs. And this is again, BIPs is superior to SGDST. This is an Indian study uh, done by uh, one of the institutes, SMS Medical College, uh, Jaipur. And what they have shown us is uh, again the uh, efficacy of BIPs in corticotop independent cushion syndrome, and they have found BIPs is superior to SGDST. And indication of dynamic and invasive testing for Cushing's disease according to different neurology radiological findings. Uh, so this is again they concluded CRH decimal percent test and SGDST have high accuracy in differential diagnosis of ACTH dependent cushion syndrome. This is what we have validated till now. And in patients with microadenoma less than 6 mm or non-visible lesion, a concordant positive response to non-invasive test sufficient to diagnose CD, cushing disease, irrespective of MRI finding. This is what I also found when I was doing IJV sampling in my thesis work. Dr. Sachin, I think we, can, we have just one minute oh, left. Yeah, this is the, uh, just the paper which we did. Uh, this is a job which we did uh, at All India Institute. And uh, we used to, uh, after giving CRH, uh, we used to take samples from both IJV simultaneously at three minutes and five minutes. And we used to do the classical CRH stimulation test. And we used to have peripheral samples. That is the typical 120 minutes uh, test. So these are the results for the three of the things. In our study, when the MRI had a greater than 5 millimeter lesion, uh, so that the, the high sensitivity was 79% and specificity was 100%. HDDST, when the suppression was greater than 80%, uh, the sensitivity and specific, sensitivity was 41 and specificity was 100. So HDDST suppression greater than 50%, it was around 50. So our study actually said, uh, if the HDDST suppresses the cortisol levels were greater than 80%, then definitely it establishes uh, microadenoma pituitary. And we did CRS IJV and the cutoff value was greater than 1.6, the ratio of central and peripheral ratio, the IJV value of ACTH and the peripheral ACTH ratio. And here also the sensitivity was 83% and specificity was 100%. When we opted for ratio greater than three, the sensitivity dropped down to 58 and specificity was 100%. And the classical CRS stimulation test, which usually you don't get the data nowadays. And this is what we got. Uh, when the ACTH greater than 35%, we took it as a cutoff. So the sensitivity was 100% and specificity was 50. When we made it uh, to greater than 50, it was almost touching 100, 100. So there were discrepancies with respect to the outcome in the classical CRS simulation test. But majority of the times, it was also predicting uh, between the Cushing's disease and ectopic ACTS syndrome. This is what we concluded in our study. So dear friends, dexamethan suppression test uh, should be per performed and interpreted in light of pretest probability based on a thorough history and physical examination. This is a test where we, uh, where we have less facilities, when we have facilities for MRI, but we don't have facilities for uh, entry cases for bills, that definitely uh, this is a test which is relevant. But in seeing to this, but it has to be uh, in conjunction with a corticotropin releasing hormone, it has to be or, or desmopressin, because that is something which will again add on uh, to the diagnosis. So I think if you are in a best center, you should go for CRS stimulated bits and, and other modalities. If you're in a center which, are, which is less equipped, you can go for IJV sampling, what we found in our data, 
after giving CRH, it was also uh, to some extent what we could not compare it with BIPs. That is true, but to some extent it was confusing. So uh, the word of uh, the era of HDDST uh, is there for some of the centers which are not well equipped. For for the better and the uh, well equipped centers, definitely they should go for the CR stimulated BIPs for the diagnosis of Cushing's disease in a state of dilemma. Thank you.